Okay, so uh, we're gonna keep going here. Um, and this one is something that I I absolutely um, think is is key because this is now we're going from relating. So we're creating an environment where we can go from uh, like I talked about sedation to relation to creation. So we're going from relating to creating in this one. The first step was how do we move from sedation into relation? We do that by creating a safe environment where they feel in control, right? So that's what we're doing. We're relating by giving them that sense that they're feeling safe, they're feeling in control. Now we're able to relate. We have the opportunity. We're given the space, we're given the attention, you know, we're in the right space. But now how do I move from there into creating? Well, in order to do, do the creating, then I need to use my relating skill to know their pains and fears. And pains and fears is what we're going to be talking about next, which is something that is very exciting. So once we've established a safe environment where they feel in control and they feel safe, uh, it's important to, of course, move that conversation towards your child's pains and fears, since this can drive a lot of their actions. Now, if you've ever heard, if you've ever heard, I never, I never get to do this, or you always statements. Of course, there are exaggerations that are not true, but they are meant to redirect some internal feelings of fear or maybe guilt towards you. Uh, so for example, if our child says, you never listen to me, you never listen to me, they may be even screaming it. What they're saying is a natural like reaction that we might have might be to say, yeah, I do listen because I just answered your question, right? Um, and, and that's our, our natural reaction to like justify and defend rather than mirroring to dive deeper, right? We talked about the, the TSM4, mirroring. Never listen to you. Hmm. Give it some time so they can explain what they mean. The pain your child may be trying to express is, I want to be listened to. And the deeper fear may be, I'm afraid that you may not consider me worth listening to. I'm afraid that you may not even consider me worth listening to. So pain, fear, like the pain being people don't listen to me. And the second is maybe I'm not worth listening to. Like it's not worth it for other people to listen to me. That is a tough situation, right? And now we're, now we're deep. So knowing this, knowing this information, this deeper fear would totally transform the conversation from defense to encouragement, from pain and fears to goals and dreams. This is what it means to move from relating to creating, right? Because once we know those pains and fears, we can very more easily move to goals and dreams, but we cannot do that if we don't know what the pains and fears are. It's just a matter of like us defending them. When we are defending ourselves, we are creating this wall, this barrier. We don't want to listen. I'm not like, I've, I've turned off the listening and now I'm, I'm in the defending. And so that's something that uh, was a good, was a good realization uh, for me that sometimes I was defending, right? And I'm really good at defending because I'm, I'm used to it. Like as a child, I had to do this all the time. You know, parents would say, hey, why are you doing that? Which to me sounded like, wow, like you're like really criticizing what I'm doing um, to, well, maybe they just want to learn a little bit more, right? Maybe they're trying to explore a little bit about why uh, I am motivated to move in this direction. Um, so instead of defending, if I can go more towards informing, um, it, can, it can help a lot. And that's not easy. Like it, it's not easy doing it with our own parents. It's not easy doing it with our own kids. Uh, so I recognize that's why you need those tools, right? You need like TSM-4, you need other types of, of tools in order to make it easier for yourself. Now, negotiation often doesn't happen with just a single individual, um, especially with group activities. Like often you've got many decision makers. Uh, you may have already um, used the ask your mother, <laughs> for 
phrase. Uh, but this also, of course, applies to child consent as well. So, for example, my wife and I were aligned that we wanted to get our inflatable boat uh, to Ghost Lake, you know, to test it out. We just wanted to try it before our camping trip. Um, but my youngest wanted to play the Oculus uh, Quest. He has a game, maybe Vacation Simulator. It's, it's funny, like, so ironic. But he, he wanted to play Vacation Simulator on the Oculus Quest. Uh, so we had to get him on board for why it was important for everyone to learn boat safety before our camping trip. Um, so group consensus. Just because we have consent as parents is not enough. Uh, we need to make sure that our child has consent as well. And usually it's not hard to know. Um, of course, if our uh, kid is lying to us, uh, especially when they're younger, um, even adults, like as adults, we tend to use more words and we speak in the third person with words like they and them. Uh, for example, they gave me no choice. Mm. Or some of them thought that was a good idea. So when you find them lying, a natural reaction is to obviously be disappointed that they lied. Uh, but if we mirror that into a question, they gave you no choice? Some of them? I, I wouldn't, I, <laughs> I don't know if you'd use the face. That's something I use. Uh, you don't have to use the face, but uh, it's something that I, I use uh, as well. But I like the mirroring of that question, like they, who's they? Some of them, who's some of them? Um, it gives them an opportunity to explain like what happened here. And um, it, it shows like there's a curiosity into what's happening. So these fears are what I believe uh, Chris Voss is referring to uh, as the black swan moments uh, that change the direction or the course of a negotiation in his book, Never Split the Difference. We all have uh, pains and fears. Uh, and we, but we can't help one another if we don't know what those are. And if we feel that our child is addicted to playing video games or being on social media all the time, we can't only see it as their problem. Many of these fears can only be addressed when someone else is there to basically say what we just like are saying in our heads. Uh, to make us think about what we are we are saying. Uh, maybe they feel alone and disconnected from their friends. Maybe they're afraid that they can't do anything right in the real world. So in the video game world, oh man, it's awesome. I feel like a hero. I can do anything. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. But like, if we can find that out, imagine like how much this would change the course of our conversation, how much it would help build that relationship that we really want to see with our child. The sooner we move from defense and accusations to relating with our child's pains and fears, the sooner we can move towards creating the goals that will move them towards their, their dreams. And this is literally what I mean by relation to creation.